Hi everyone, today we are going to be recreating Twitter's side navigation bar. We are going to be using Next.js 13's app router, so whenever we click on a tab, we are going to be navigated to that route. This is a continuation from our previous video where we created a bottom navigation bar. We're going to make sure that everything is responsive, so let's get to it. So here's what the project looks like when it's running. And I'm just going to be walking you through the files that I've added. And you can find the source code for this in the description below. Now in the previous video, we had a prerequisite of having a specific icon library, which is the one that I'm going to be working with in this project. So you can either go check out the previous video or you could check the link in the description below of the library and download it by yourself. Now the files and folders that we are going to be walking through are the explore messages and notifications folders and within them the pages, the page file, the layout file, and the side nav file. Now the first file we are going to take a look at is the layout file where everything starts. This is where we are importing our side nav component which we are going to take a look at and we are putting it right inside our max width wrapper because we also want it to be within the wrapper. So as you can see as I extend it it's within our wrapper that we have right here. So now that we know where the side nav is being imported, now we're going to take a look at the actual side nav component. So let's open that up. So let's walk through it. Let's start at the top. As you can see, we need to use client because we are using the use navigation hook that we've created previously. This hook is helping us manage the state of which route we are in. And we'll take a look at that. We are also importing link and icon so we could get these icons here. We are importing these variables from use navigation. Now we can go ahead and dive into our return statement. So I'm going to go ahead and shrink this. Now our outer div is a flex flex column. That's how we're getting all of these in a column. Now we got a space Y of four. So there's a padding of four between each item making sure all the items are centered, that there's a specific padding, and we want it to be hidden when it reaches a certain size. So this is defaultly hidden. If we shrink our screen to small, then you can see the side nav goes away. As soon as we make it a little bit bigger, it comes back. So that's what that hidden is doing. We got a border right, so this is how our border is showing up, and that's a specific color. We're making sure that the height is full. We want it to fill our whole screen. The width of the side nav, I set it to 120, and if we get bigger, then that width also gets bigger. And this is a fixed side nav. So as you can see, when I'm scrolling down, the side nav is not moving with me. This is separate. So that's how that's being done. Now, if we take a look at within the div, it's just a bunch of links that we have and each link is associated with each side navigation tab. So if we take a look at the first link, we have the Twitter, we have the Twitter X logo and and this is where we're setting our hover state. So when I'm hovering over it, that has a specific color that shows up and that padding allows there to be some space within that hover, making sure that it's fully rounded and that there's a little bit of a duration and that it doesn't immediately show the hover as soon as I go over it. So that's that. And when we click on it, it takes us to the homepage. So let's test that. If we click on it, it takes us to the homepage. Now for the next icon, it's similar across the other icons. We have similar styling to the previous link. We have a different padding since it's rectangular. And we also have a word that's included in our tab. So as you can see, the next part is our icon. I have a condition. I'm checking whether the home is active. If it is, then I want it to be a specific icon, which is the home fill icon. So this is what that looks like. And as soon as it's inactive, so if I go to a different tab, that icon changes to the outline. So that's how that's being done. If I go back, we could see that we have a span. This is our home. That's how that's showing up. And this is the sizing for it. It's defaultly hidden. As soon as I reach a specific size, then it shows. So if I shrink this, you could see at a certain size right here, our name gets hidden. So that's how that's happening. Also, when the route is active, then the name is bold as well which is our condition right here so this logic is same throughout the other links i have this section commented out but similar to twitter x if you get a notification it shows a little blue dot right next to the little house so if you want to add that functionality so if you want to add that styling and add your own logic later this is what i have right now you see that the little circle shows up 
but you probably have to put some condition in there to make it show up once you get new data or something like that. So I'm going to go ahead and comment that out for now, but just want to let you know that that's there. And then that's mostly it for our side nav. Now we have our routes as well. And our routes are created within our app directory. So if we go inside our app directory, you can see we have our folders, the same name as the route that we want to navigate to. So for our explore route, you can see we have a path called backslash explore. So when I click on it, we go to that route. And if we go to this page, you can see the styling for there and we have explore page showing up in our text. So that's where that's happening. So it's the same for the other routes as well. You can see we got messages, we got notifications. That's how you set it up right here. You got to create the folder and then within it, create a page and within the page, do whatever styling that you want. If you want to change the layout, you can add layouts within these folders. But for now, I just kept it simple, kept it at page. Now, if we take a look at our page, all the pages have the same outer div. Now, since our side nav is fixed, that means we want our page to have a margin left of the same size that the side nav is on. If we don't, then you can see that page is hidden by the side nav. So if I remove these two items, you can see that this shifts right there. So these two things are very important. Make sure if you change the sizes for the side nav that you also change the sizes for these margin lefts. This is the way that I figured it out for now. Maybe there's a better way, but this is a way. So just letting you know, that's the main trick. And yeah, I think we covered everything. So you can see if we make it really big, this is what it looks like when we shrink it. Like I mentioned before, our names get shrunk and you only get the icons. If the icons are active, then it switches the icon that we want. And if we make it really, really small, then that side nav is hidden and then it's replaced by our bottom nav. And you could watch how we did this bottom nav in the previous video. And that should be it. Thanks for watching this video. I hope it was helpful. If you have any questions, leave it in the comment section below, as well as you can join our Discord community. And until next time.